got all these hooligans down over there and they're getting in our shots. So we have to postpone some shots that we could have just knocked out right now. Um, yeah. So we're just gonna wait till they leave. And if it comes to it, we're just gonna cheat it and film somewhere else so we can get out of here. So. All right, let's just get this ready. So this video is definitely not gonna be very formal. Um, I wanted to put a lot of effort into it, but I am very, very busy with my work right now and editing videos for clients and stuff. So I just wanted to get this video out there. It's not gonna be very formal, but I wanted to make it for those of you who subscribe to my channel solely because of this video that was made. Now, first off, before we get started with everything, we better set the mood. That's much better. This is the beginning of the world's best video that's ever gonna be on YouTube. We'll see. But this is Tandon and uh, Doom. Yeah, Doom 3657, that's my uh, YouTube channel. Yeah, and if you like this video that we're gonna make, you'll love his channel because it's about gaming and v video making and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And this will be right up that alley. And then this is his fiance. Hello. Uh, what, what, explain this, explain so, the... So, this is Kylie. We met actually on an, a dating app on Mutual. It's called Mutual, yeah, Mutual. and... Mutual. Yep. Did not know that. Yeah, and dating apps work, apparently. <laughs> we are testaments of that. So thank you for everyone who supported Trainer Red. That was a passion project, as I call it. It wasn't funded by anything. It was just solely me and a couple friends, and we just decided to make it because it was a story that I wanted to tell uh, from my perspective. And a lot of people are fans of this character and the way I wanted to portray it was if I was a fan of this and I wanted to watch it This is how I would want this character to be represented So first off kind of the origin of this short film that we made I drew a lot of inspiration from a few different sources for this character and the three main ones were the manga manga I don't really know how to pronounce it properly. I think it's manga the anime as well and also the video games, which most people are more familiar with the character of Red, um, because if you played the original games, um, that was the protagonist in those games. And for this character especially, in, in the three different interpretations that I just listed, um, first off, most people know him from the video games, and they know that he is very silent. He doesn't talk very much, and in the remakes of Gold and Silver and games after that, you're able to challenge Trainer Red, and when you do, all you see is dot, 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 dot. He kind of got a reputation from that, but originally, the Trainer Red actually was very talkative. So in the manga, he jokes a lot, he's a really cool down-to-earth guy. Um, and is really nothing like his um, video game counterpart. And then of course there's the Pokemon Origins anime, which is like, I think it's like four episodes or something. And of course he talks a lot in that. And it's kind of the story of Red's story arc going through the Kanto region. And so for the character of Red, uh, I wanted it to be kind of in the beginning because I do have thoughts of making this into like a short YouTube series and I wanted it to be kind of placed at the very beginning. And that of course was gonna be around Pallet Town and you know, but I didn't, I wanted it to go. I wanted you to feel like you were actually in the action and he was immersed as a character. But I want this to be as nostalgic as it possibly can, so when I was writing the script, and by the way, when you guys read my script, it's like chicken scratch, so okay. I'm not good at drawing and storyboarding. Um, but I wanted it to be very nostalgic, and so if you played the games as a kid, or if you play them now, um, you would pick up on a lot of things that might kind of invoke some of the childhood memories and stuff. What do you think of my storyboarding skills? I think they're absolutely fantastic. Um, you may need to take a drawing class, <laughs> to be honest, but I don't, I, I, I don't think you'd need that for I'm not though. offended. I, I completely agree with everything you just said. So we started in Viridian Forest, which is just shortly after Trainer Red begins his journey to become a Pokemon master. So for the character of Red, our interpretation, I wanted him to kind of draw inspiration from all three of these sources, and I really wanted to pay homage to the fans who either played the video games or watched the short series or um, read the manga. So I definitely wanted him to have some dialogue but I also wanted him to be silent. And so to pay homage to both, 
Uh, the dialogue, as you have seen, it's just kind of in his head. He's kind of rambling in his head of, you know, who he is, uh, what he wants to be. But when he has his first encounter with trainer Rick, who is played by my friend Tandon, he's absolutely silent. So that way you kind of get a feeling of both and it stays true to the source material of whatever you are personally a fan of. Uh, so the cameras that we use, so primarily I wanted to use the Panasonic GH5S and the reason why I wanted to use that was because this camera has the capability of shooting in a 10-bit color format. And for those of you who don't know what that means, that basically just means that it's able to get a lot more color and a lot more details in the picture quality that you're seeing. Now, there was one issue with this. So my friend Tandon, who was so kind to come and help me shoot this, um, he, to my knowledge, didn't have a lot of experience working with high-end prosumer cameras. And the thing about the GH5 cameras is they don't have the best autofocus. And so there's really only three of us. There were me and Tandon, and then his girlfriend at the time, who he's actually now married. So congrats to you guys. But I was heavily relying on Tandon that when I was in the frame as Trainer Red, I needed him to film me. And to make it easier on him, I needed a camera with good autofocus. And so the camera I'm actually filming on now is the Canon 1DX Mark II. Doesn't shoot in 10 bit, but it does a decent job in everything else. And the files that you get out of that camera are so big that you have a lot more latitude to play with the colors. But it has such great autofocus that basically I just handed that camera over to Tandon. I said, okay, you're gonna point it at me or in this direction, all you have to do is hit the record button because I knew the autofocus was so good that whatever he was pointing the camera at, it would be in focus. What's your experience been like? What my experience has been is my arms are tired just from 10 minutes of holding a freaking heavy camera. I mean, this thing is heavy. I mean, that, that camera that he's holding up right now, I mean, how much does that thing weigh by itself? Uh, so this is the Canon 1DX Mark II. And it is one of the heaviest, if it's not the heaviest, it's one of the heaviest um, DSLR cameras on the market. And so someone like Tannen who doesn't handle those things very much, well, his biceps are, are feeling it, so. Yeah, like, not to say that I'm weak or anything like that, I'm pretty average bro. Not, not Not to say that he's weak, but we know, no, I'm just kidding. Oh, thanks, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> And so what's next exactly for um, this character? Well, ideally, I had a lot of fun making this. Um, and I have some other ideas cooking in my head of maybe what I wanted to do next with this character. But right now, everything is kind of super open to interpretation. And if you have any ideas, now is your chance or forever hold your peace maybe stories you would like to see with this character, please feel free to comment below because I'm totally open to incorporating those. And as you can see, I mean, I don't have a budget for this. And I had somebody comment, they said, oh, it was really good, but next time include the full fight scene because the part where we get to Trainer Red versus the bug catcher, uh, it kind of just cuts and then opens back up and you kind of just get the sense that, okay, Trainer Red won. We don't have the budget to make an animated fight between Pokemon. And so that's kind of where that's at. So if we make this into a series, I kind of want it to be focused more on Trainer Red and his story rather than Pokemon battles. I mean, there'll definitely be Pokemon in them. Um, and obviously Trainer Red's whole story arc is revolved around Pokemon. So there's no way around that. Uh, but it's mostly on his story and his experiences and what he feels. And that's kind of what I want it to be about. Uh, the next story I would like to uh, kind of talk about and tell with this character um, is his, uh, is Trainer Red's experience when he goes to Lavender Town. So that's a story I am dying to kind of tell and create. So let me know what you guys think on that. So there's a lot of unanswered things that I have mentioned and I'm gonna try and answer all the rest. And now we're gonna do the fun part. I'm gonna do a shot by shot analysis of the video of Trainer Red and kind of I want to talk about some of the choices that I made as we do it. All the things that you see and hear in this short film, I either contacted the YouTubers directly or I went to their about page and saw that they were giving permission 
to use their content. So all the 3D Pokemon models that you saw, I reached out to individual YouTubers or saw that they give permission to use their models. And then for the uh, for Louis Gigagus uh, to use his music, he does allow it the use as long as you give him credit and stuff. So guys, moral of the story, everyone, we're all creators. We're all trying to create the best content that we can and don't steal from people. So obviously my logo, hmm. got to tie that in somehow. Okay, so the opening shot, I wanted it to be very obvious and very majestic. And so this is actually a drone shot. So when we were actually at location, um, I brought my drone and I flew it, but I didn't really get the drone shots of the colors I wanted. And so just as an FYI, we actually filmed this in um, the fall time. And I live in Utah and that's where um, this was filmed and based at and the fall colors you know when all the trees start turning orange and yellow man they're so vibrant uh, but this opening shot i didn't get the colors that i wanted and the look that i wanted when we were actually filming so i actually used a drone shot that was that i captured a year before this and it seemed to work and since it was the same time of the year it meshed pretty well but as you can see super vibrant and this opening shot again um I, the, the world of Pokemon is super colorful and I wanted to push the colors as far as I could and that's why I chose to film this in this particular time of the year and I wanted everything to be super colorful and so that you'd really get a feel and sense that you're actually in this world so yeah I'll shut up now for now never mind I'm gonna keep talking all right so 4.82803 kilometers south of Pewter City uh, I kind of did some math on that, but obviously we're, you know, if you're familiar with the games, Viridian Forest is prior to getting to Viridian City. Um, so I just kind of went with the distance that somewhat made sense. Um, so yeah. Those birds up there are animated, they're not real. Okay, again, I talked earlier about um, some of the 3D models that we use. So all the 3D models that you see, I had permission from the YouTubers, okay? So I just wanna stress that I as a creator would want, if somebody used my content, I would want them to ask and uh, have permission. And so I wanted to make sure that I did that for these creators as well. So you got some Caterpie, Weedle, Rattata. I know you can't catch Magikarp in Viridian Forest, okay, in the games, but obviously there's going to be ponds and stuff in the Viridian, in the Viridian Forest, and you see that um, in the anime as well. So, and of course you got to include Magikarp. So this shot, actually, when I placed this 3D model in, I wanted it to look kind of foggy, so I, so I put Magikarp on top, I cut the green screen out, and I put Magikarp on top of this underwater shot that you see here that I filmed with a GoPro. And then I took another layout of that same shot and then I just tur turned on the opacity uh, and laid it on top so it looked kind of murky and foggy. More believable. Obviously fake Pidgey. You see some, a Weedle, some Kakuna uh, in the background. A lot of people would probably miss this because it happens so, so fast, but. All right, this is the shot that I wanted to get. And that's the reveal shot. And so technology is so good. So I actually had Tandon, he was on one of my um, gimbals. It's kind of a filmmaking tool that you mount your camera onto. And I basically told him, okay, push the button to tilt the camera down. And as you're walking to me, tilt the camera up and just walk to me. So here's a guy uh, that's never really used a, a gimbal in his life and the type of tech, uh, equipment that I use to film all my professional work. And technology is so good that I threw him on it. And this, this shot that you see here, it really only took a few takes and then he nailed it. I did apply some warp stabilization in Premiere Pro to kind of give it a little bit of a more smoother look, but in and of itself, straight out of camera, he actually did a really good job. Uh, and I wanted the reveal to be kind of epic. So I just kind of had that rolling and the music builds up uh, to where you see uh, Trainer Red revealed. And action. Uh. 
Oh, that was a bad one. I don't think I even hit record. Is it recording? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's funny. I want to be the best, more than anyone ever was. They'll call me Victor. So, um, again, paying homage to uh, the anime and the manga, so you actually hear him talking. Now, everything that you hear in this dialogue, I got actually straight out of the um, anime, of Pokemon Origins. So, you, the part where he says, you know, uh, my name is my name is Red, my father gave me that name, straight out of that, so I wanted to pay homage to that. And, of course, we know Trainer Red's biggest ambition is to be a Pokemon champion, so... All the outfits and stuff, you know, came out of my own pocket and uh, what I had. So, of course, you know, the iconic gloves and uh, this jacket that I bought that you'll see is something that I bought online um, from a great um, creator who made that for me. And I bought it and I will put a link if you're interested in yada yada yada. My name is Red. Also, of course, he's pretty well known of having red eyes. Not so much in the animated series, but kind of artist interpretation of him. So I actually had red contacts already. When I was going to film school, I made a short film uh, called Nightwing. And Nightwing's costume usually black and blue, but I did an interpretation that's black and red. And I got red contacts for that, so I already had those. My father gave me that name, hoping that when I grew up... Everything's from the uh, anime there, all the words. That's why I chose you. Hey! Here's the reveal. Okay, quick history. So the reason why I chose to have Trainer Red battle this bug catcher in particular, um, his name is Rick. So if you play the Pokemon remakes of Red and Blue, so fire red and leaf green the very first trainer you can battle besides your rival in viridian forest is bug catcher trainer rick and so that's why we went with him and named him uh rick and you'll see here now in the game he actually has a weedle um i kind of wanted to take it one step further and give him a b drill because this youtuber had made this with a green screen and I just thought it would kind of add an extra flair with it and the reveal of having Beedrill next to this bug catcher side um, I thought would be kind of cool and of course you know bug catcher Rick here he has the iconic net and hat that you uh, saw that when you played the video game so again we'll play that reveal one more time one of my favorite parts in the video the name's Rick. So Tandon, who plays bug catcher Rick, um, he doesn't really have much experience with acting. I mean, he has a YouTube channel and he does Twitch. Uh, so he definitely has experience with being in front of camera, but it's kind of a bit different when you're faking something. You know, when you're a YouTuber or something, you're kind of just projecting your personality and stuff, but he's actually acting. And uh, he said to me that he didn't think it did, he did a good job. I think he did a great job. And I hope you guys did too. Uh, he really was a champion, you know, he, I, I, I didn't yell at him, but, you know, I was kind of bossing him around, and uh, he was such a good sport, and so I thought he did a great job, so I, I wrote all the dialogue, and he was so open to, you know, uh, constructive criticism and feedback as we we're doing it. Now, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm an actor, I mean, I did theater and stuff, and went to film school, but, um, you know, I don't know a whole lot, I would say, compared to some other people, but I feel like I know a little bit. Uh, so he, again, he was super open and cool with doing all of that. And again, the dialogue here that Trainer Rick is speaking, I actually took straight from the video game. So if you want to bust out that Game Boy Advance of yours and play um, Pokemon Leaf Green or Fire Red and you battle against that first bug catcher, you'll hear something very similar. Again, Paying homage that red is just silent now. You have Pokemon. Do you ever speak? 
So this way we're trying to make both sides of the fence happy, both fans of the games and of the manga, that he, you do hear dialogue from him, but you really don't when it comes from other people's perspectives, so. Battle, again, Louis Gigagas does incredible music. So all the music you hear in this uh, is from his, so the Viridian Force theme that this film opened up with, and then this battle theme. I'd, I've never met him, uh, just super talented, love his work. Um, so yeah, highly recommend going to subscribe to his YouTube channel. I'll leave a link in the description below. Come on! Okay, this may be a point of controversy towards you if you're a Pokemon fan. So, in uh, I most people are familiar that Red's strongest Pokemon is Charizard. Now, in the manga, he actually his first Pokemon is actually Bulbasaur, out of the three starters. Um, but it's more so well known that in the games and in the uh, and in the anime, he chose Charmander. So, and honestly, I just think Charizard's so much cooler than Venusaur. So, I want I, maybe it's kind of biased. So, don't hate me for it. But I chose Charmander. So, the reveal that okay, the trainer Red, he chose Charmander for his starter Pokemon. Now, like I said, we don't have the money to actually pay animators to animate a Pokemon battle, and I have no skill whatsoever in animation. So I wanted to make sure I could introduce the characters and introduce the Pokemon that they have um, while you know, giving you the uh, vibe that yes, they did have a Pokemon battle, but not actually showing it. Uh, and I didn't really know how to do that, so I drew inspiration from a certain <laughs> unpopular movie. And I decided to just go with a snap that, you know, Red, he's silent, but he's so in tune with his Pokemon that he just snaps. And uh, Charmander knows exactly what to do, so. That was the first time I met him, the champion Red. So that, that dialogue I came up with, and I wanted to put that in. Um, you know, he's saying that's the first time I met him, the champion Red, meaning that there's a lot more to this story than what you see. Because I, while this, I might not ever make a sequel to this, um, I, I wanted the possibility to be there, so that's why I included that dialogue. Because I would like to, and you know, it just takes a lot of time and effort um, from people. But you know, if you want it to happen and it's a passion project, you do what you can. So that's why I chose to include that in here. Again, obviously you don't see Beedrill anymore, so Char or Charmander beat it. That effect right there, given, that was a light leak that I just overlaid on the footage um, with the Pokeball sound effect, so it makes you think, okay, he just returned Charmander. That's how I got rid of that animation in that. Now, this part's a bit funny. When they saw that, and they, I had some people comment, and they said when Red held out his hand, they thought he was going to help the bug catcher up, um, which is not the case. He takes his money instead. And now if you play the games, you know that every time you win a battle or you lose a battle, the loser um, will pay money to the winner. So just paying homage to that. So, so that shot, you see him walking away, and then Bug Catcher says, next time it'll be different. He kind of, Trainer Red just holds up his hand like that. I actually drew that from the main Pokemon anime when, uh, I, I don't even know if I'd find the footage, but it's where Gary is walking away from Ash, and Ash says something snarky, and Gary just holds up his hand, and so that's kind of where I got that inspiration from. All right, do you want Red to return? That is the question. Um, nobody really answered that in the comments, so I don't think people really want Red to return. Um, 
but behind the scenes coming soon. So hopefully now it's here. So thank you so much for watching again. If you have any like ideas, I would love to hear them. Um, I would love to uh, make a sequel to this and just kind of a fun little YouTube series I, I do here on the side on. Now I am a, I do do videography a lot full time and it's my job. Um, but the reason why a big reason why I did this is I find when you turn your passion into a job, it does compromise it a bit. So that was the big inspiration is I wanted to do a passion project or something I really wanted to do in with videography to help keep that spark alive. Because when you turn a passion into a job, at the end of the day, it, it uh, it's a job and there's other things you'd rather do. So to kind of keep my passion alive and invigorated, if that's a word, invigorated, yes. Uh, that's why I went with this. So that's kind of the origin of the live action Trainer Red. Um, I don't think really there's anything out there. I've watched a lot of, you know, fan films of uh, Pokemon series and honestly a lot of them are really dark and I wanted mine to be very bright and colorful and for the tone to be very light. Um, you know, I, I know there's one out there that, you know, talks a lot about like underground fighting and stuff and I know, you know, if Pokemon were real, that's probably what it would be. Um, but I wanted this to be still set in a fantasy world and so hopefully uh, you liked it Hopefully I didn't bore you to death. So thank you so much for watching like comment and subscribe Let me know you were here and we will catch you guys next time